So interesting questions we received from both um, from you, our listeners. So we thank you so much for that. Let's pick it up, pick it up on that note. So because if we could pull up um, the SMS that we got from our viewer, uh, there was a specific question that was directed to you. So she the says lady she's been married twenty years. Yes. And uh, the yeah. husband is financially responsible. How do they split mm. property? It, it's actually a very sad case. But uh, the, the two or three ways I look at this. One, yeah. how many kids do you have? Um, how, how irresponsible is he? Does he? He doesn't pay school fees or doesn't contribute in buying property and things like that. So in this case, um, what I'll advise is um, there are two ways. Either get a family, I mean get impartial people in the family to help resolve this. They she can said she's working out. She's worked out already, yeah. so that they can either sit down as a couple and agree how they're going to go forward, depending on whether they have children or not. Yeah. If they don't have children, then it means they have to bring in a lawyer who will actually now ask a couple of questions. One, uh, where are the receipts for the contribution? Uh, do you live in a rented house or is it built or bought by, by the two of you? And then this might end up going to court because definitely we know that the man will fight for control of everything but if children are there my advice will be try and sort it out amicably between the two of them before bringing in a lawyer because at the end of the day once you bring in a lawyer the chances of arbitration become actually very nil yeah. or the other option is to actually go to her and find amicable ways in terms of just being able to because at the end of the day if children are involved uh, and it goes to court the, the court might actually hold the property in, in, in trust for, for the children and yeah. find a way for the children to be able to benefit. Because at the end of the day, the kids are, 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 are the dependents. And if the wife, I mean, if she can be able to prove that she's the responsible one and the court believe her, they can award a lot more in terms of uh, property to be able to care, take care of the kids. And that's what I was going to. After 20 years of marriage and you get divorced, it's, what it's actually, I mean, how, psych, I mean, mentally, how do you actually function? Financially speaking, where do you start as well? And even uh, 20 years of receipts, I mean, where would I you mean, as a lawyer at the end of the day, when, when you demand evidence or, or, or proof of payment, it's what the law requires. But as a human being, 20 years of, of collecting receipts, it's actually not really, really possible. Okay. And in this case, the, the definition of responsibility is actually relative, okay. depending from one person to the next. Tabitha, from a therapist's point of view, mm -hmm. you know, we are told men should be the head of the family, women be submissive. There's one comment that came there that said money is the root cause of divorces, of marriages falling. Do you agree? Uh, I think from the start of this program, I said, I ask people to choose from three terms, my money, your money, our money. Mm -hmm. So if we actually choose our money and we, be, we make it practical, mm -hmm. the, the money is going to be our servant and not our master. So it is not going to do any damage on our money. The other thing is uh, marriage starts with the communication. If you want to kill your marriage, just stop communicating. And communication is not giving somebody a peace of mind. <laughs> communication is trying to make your partner understand you as you also try to help him understand you. Yeah. And this actually helps us to deal with a conflict before it develops to a level where we will need a lawyer because a conflict starts with a problem to solve. If you have a problem to solve and you actually sit on that side, your partner sits on that side and you point fingers at each other, that problem is going to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. But if you sit on one side and face the problem and say we are going to deal with this problem until it is out of our marriage, you'll be able to do that. So from a therapist's point of view, how would you respond to the lady who just told us she's been in a marriage for 20 years, her husband is financially responsible, she has no choice but to leave? Uh, there is one, another marriage counselor called uh, uh, Monroy. Uh, what is the other name? Miles Monroe. Miles Monroe. The late Miles Monroe. Miles Monroe yes. said something that I uh, totally agree with, that if what you have done has not killed you, you still have strength to do more. What has been the magic, what has been the secret of keeping a marriage for 20 years? And there are people who get married and they divorce within the first year, the second year. You have been in this marriage for 20 years. You need only to look at a few things and you'll be able actually to deal with the problem. Mm -hmm. okay. And yeah. you actually don't deal with your partner, you deal with the problem. 
So okay. what would you say to someone like Tobias Imbogo, who says girl empowerment is the cause of many divorces? In the past, women were living in a society where they had no say, and this made them serve under men at all levels. But today, a woman serves as an equal to a man, and a man can't change. So that's where the problems begin. Maybe Trevor, you only can give what you have. I am a Christian, and I believe very much in the word of the Bible. The Bible says, wives submit your husbands as you would submit to God. So if you are a submissive wife, whether you have money or not, whether you are educated or not, it doesn't make a lot of difference. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church to the extent of dying for it. If a husband would die for his family, starting with his wife, then there is a lot of commitment. So we are not going actually to be talking about fighting in the family. Let's fight the problems. Let's fight to stay together. All right. We need to take now closing comments. I'll yes. start with you, <coughs> uh, For me, I think um, uh, when it comes to divorce, I'm, 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 I'm anti-divorce. I don't support divorce. But the law is clear on how to manage this. And when it comes to investments, that's what we deal with, investments. Uh, my advice to couples is when you're investing, please uh, keep a record of um, your investments. Mm -hmm. Not only will they help you in terms of being able to understand how you're creating wealth, but just for future reference, you never know what happens. And as she's put it, uh, we have a challenge as husbands to love our wives the way Christ loved the church. And uh, I believe the church has failed us in terms of being able to guide and advise young people when they're getting into marriage. The focus has been on money, 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 and prosperity. Life isn't about prosperity. Life is about being able to deal with the challenges that come. And secondly, uh, our elders, our parents have failed us also. I still don't understand how my mother was able to raise four kids, take us to very good schools on a salary of 10,000 as a teacher to date. So I is the problem the church and our parents or us? Because we seem to be the ex factor. You know, because our parents never really gave us. I mean, I wish my mom could share with me her secrets of how she survived in her marriage for all this time before she passed. You know, how my father's been able to survive with two families, you know, all this time and to date. The, 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 the issue of lack of communication from one generation to the next, passing of advice and, and proverbs and, 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 and guidance. And teachings. Mm. And so teachings from one, one generation. Because we are since independent, because that's where we were born as a country, we're looking at the fourth generation. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what are the cumulative knowledge and advice from since then from our elders to now as far as marriage is concerned. As a lawyer, I can be very pretty focused on an issue to resolve it from a legal point of view. But as a human being, I want to be happy and I want my marriage to succeed. So I would be happy to get advice from the likes of her, from my father, on how things are because our generation is intolerant, we're impatient and want results now. Okay. Tabitha, what do you say? What's your closing comment? Uh, my closing comment is that um, uh, when there is a marriage, when the husband and wife are doing well, uh, the family will also do well. Because like, I look at the way you are talking about the empowerment of the girl child, and uh, look at the way the boy is growing up. The, the boys are growing up to be ladies. Why? Because most of the time they are with their mothers. You should actually wake up and be very much aware that you are going to be very, very vulnerable men. If you, are, if you do not actually have time for your boy child. Because if you have your boy child and the other person have their boy child, you, you teach them how to become a man. The, the, there would not be any sidelining of the boy. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to believe that uh, people should actually be able to wake up with all these problems, with all these divorces, with the children suffering so much. Ask yourself, do I have time for my family? Do I have time for my wife? Do I have time for my children? And then the other question you should ask yourself, Trevor, I can see you are looking at me <laughs> very keenly, <laughs> is that how much money do I want to make and have no family? Because the reason why you don't get time to bond with your children is because you are going out to look for money. How much money do you want to have and have no family? Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. And most important, communicate, like you said. If you want to kill your marriage, just kill communication. If you want your marriage to be alive, 
keep your communication channels open. Okay. You know? And she said communications is not giving someone a piece of your mind. That I remember. Thank you so much, it's David Daybreak. We're taking a short break here. Thank you so much for coming in. Managing family therapist, Tamita Gikanga, Santi Sana, mm -hmm. and financial lawyer, Steve Biko as well, for coming in and giving us the heads and tails of money and marriage. There's a lot of feedback coming through. Should we bring them up now? Or should we do that yes. after the break? I believe we have SMSs and tweets okay. as well. Let's take a look at them right now. All right, let's see what you're saying on 224-22. Governor 254, you say, a great marriage is not when the perfect couple comes together. It is when an imperfect couple learns to enjoy their differences. Mm. All right. Interesting. Um, hmm, her money guide, interesting. Her mm. money guide says, our family is a financial contract. 50-50 is up to me to grow my 50%. The joint accounts is for bills. It's crazy, but it works. Okay. Hmm, she's yeah, found something that, was, that works for her marriage. That sounds good. Mwendoa says, the problem is our sisters that we marry. You meet a lady, but once you bring her to your house, in less than a year, she turns to be a ghost. Failure goes to our parents. They don't educate us what the meaning of my real marriage is. Marriage needs commitment. Okay. Um, let's take a look at our SMS now. Our SMS line is 22422 in case you ever want to also be part of the conversation. OJ, good morning. You say very beautiful, as Sorry. Tabitha puts it, as the way it should be. It's good and she accepts, it's good rather that she accepts that it's almost impossible for women to share their money in marriages and do so. Um, women, do women have good intentions? Okay. okay. Joseph from Kisumu says, I think money only unites players but not couples. Where after some time the two players will part when quantity of wealth depreciates. And this ends up giving us imaginary marriages. The face of money is untrue meaning of marriage. All right. Robinson Stanley, you say, let's stop misleading our couples on matters matrimony. Everything a mutual stay starts with money. When um, when it is no more. The bond of everything uh, marital is love. When our love for each other is replaced with money as a focus, then forget about it. And then uh, forget about it. And then shall we, shall either side of the party start processing legal documents, not to secure the union, but to secure the wealth therein. You continue by saying, as uh, my Norm McLaughlin. Thank puts you very it. much. Puts it. A successful marriage requires falling in love many times, always with the same person. All right. All right. Johannes Bot from Turkana says marriage is not a competition. Don't get married because your age mates are, are getting married. If it had been love, true love, it would never have failed. Love requirements. Love requires to be in a marital bond. You must respect, care, trust, understand and stay faithful towards each other. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for all the feedback. Yes, we really appreciate it. Thank you to both um, Tabitha and Steve Biko for being yeah. here with us this morning. We want to take a commercial break. Daybreak continues. Willis Raburi will be joining us in just a few minutes. See you on the other side. All right.